last night Debbie and I were talking and I was telling her that this week I was thinking about doing all of my um, videos on Motivated in Two Minutes about love. I'm just talking about what it meant to be in love and the times I've been in love and she immediately shot me one of those, um, well, leave me out of it looks. I'm pretty sure Debbie doesn't watch my um, Motivated in Two Minute videos. I don't know if she's one of the seven or eight who do, but as I approached number 158, I think this is of Motivated in Two Minutes, I thought about the people that have loved me in my life and the kinds of love I've had in my life. I mean, it's been extensive, it's been broad, and it's been all kinds of ways, but I thought about where I learned to love, and it was from my mom and dad. They had so many loving relationships. And I grew up in a church home where the fellowship was just broad with love in so many ways. One of the families that we really loved were the Langs, um, Harold and Phyllis and Steve and Ted and Grandma Darnell, Phyllis's mom, and just they were like family to us. We would go over to the Langs' house and have dinner with them. They went to Malawi, Africa, the first people I knew who went on a missions trip to Africa. And I remember them. Phyllis would write me letters from Malawi, and she would tell me about the young man that lived with them and helped take care of their house with them. His name was Eric, just like mine. She would talk about the, what they were going to make for me and chocolate pie when they got home. And then when they got home, they ex invited us to their house, and we all had curry at their house, which I'd never had before, and they taught us what it was like to eat fruit curry. And we felt love, a genuine love. I thought about the Meesters, about Don and Marge Meester, and Debbie and Jerry Meester. People that, it was like from the time I was a kid, they were just always around. I remember them coming up to our house once and mom having the china out on the dinner table. So I don't know if it was a Thanksgiving they had with us or what it was, but for whatever reason, the Meesters were at our house in the dining room table where we only ate mostly at Thanksgiving or Christmas. And there was the china, there was the crystal, and there was my buddy Jerry Meester. We were kids in elementary school, all of us eating together and the family there. I think it was one of the hardest parts about when my dad left the church in 1971 in Long Beach to pursue other ventures in his life and to begin retirement was that I had just always assumed those people would always be a part of my life, that they would never not be a part of my life. And then as an adult, I began to build relationships here in Riverside, where I fell in love with people, fell in love with families. And then I would watch families come and go. And you begin to realize that some people, they're not going to always be a part of your life. You start to face the hard reality that there are issues that other people have that just end up separating us and end up hurting us. Even when I think maybe love still remains. I think it's important for us in these difficult days of anger and violence, in these days when I think so many families are, are broken in so many ways, to remember the value of love that goes beyond our relationships, that goes beyond our, our husband and wife relationships, the value of love that extends to our children, the value of love that extends to the broader fellowship, the value of love that goes to our neighborhood, the value of love that goes into our schools, the value of love that goes into our nation. Love is of great importance. And so often we just focus on sex. So often we just focus on boyfriends or girlfriends. So often we just focus on a marriage relationship. And we forget that love is about people like the Meesters. Love is about people like the Langs. Love is about people that are drawn into our families. They're written across our hearts and we carry them with us everywhere we go. I don't know the people that you love today that legitimately have poured deep value into your lives, but I know you have some. And I hope that you're pouring yourself into some people's lives as well right now. That you're taking time to love people deeply and to believe that these people are going to be a part of your life forever because you've chosen that. 
You've made the decision through good times, through bad, through disagreements, through great agreement that you're going to love and serve and share your lives to the very end together. Towards that end, I still know the Meester's kids and I'm friends with them. Don and Marge have been gone a long time. Towards that end, I mean, when Harold and Phyllis died, I did their funerals and um, still friends with Ted and Steve. And it wasn't anything I did. It was what my mom and dad did. They gave us loving relationships. Are you giving your family loving relationships today? Are you pouring yourself into them in a deep and wonderful way, in a way that goes out around the world, in a way that goes out around your neighborhood, in a way that opens hearts up, in a way that continues on? If you're not, there's a desperate need in your family for more love. It's the only kind of power we really need. It's the power that comes from love. It's how we become the miracle. God bless you today. I'm so thankful for Don and Marge Meester, for Harold and Phyllis Lang, for Ted and for Steve and for Debbie and for Jerry. And I'm so thankful for you. I want you to be the miracle. Come and be the miracle with me. Share in this wonderful, wonderful life together. Let's fall in love. For the next seven days, I'm going to be talking about love. I might be talking about you. Maybe like Debbie, you'll say, oh, great, leave me out of this. Send me a note if you want to be left out of it. Have a fantastic week. I love you. Thanks so much. If you're one of those majestic 12 or 15 or 20 or 30 who are watching, thanks. Share it with a friend. I love you. Be the miracle.